Hi everyone, Charles here for MLE Papers. If you are new to this channel, welcome. I am a PhD student in machine learning at the University of Tokyo. And on this channel, I talk about machine learning, whether it is about research, theory, application, but also career and studies. And today, we are going to explore a wonderful research paper of this year, 2024, on reinforcement learning, or RL. Now, RL is a major area of our field of machine learning that cannot be ignored by any of us machine learning enthusiasts. So whether you are new to RL or a seasoned RL expert, this video is for you. Today's paper is titled Settling the Sample Complexity of Online Reinforcement Learning. It has been written by Zihan Zhang, Yuxin Chen, Jason D. Lee, and Simon S. Du, and will appear this year, 2024, at the prestigious conference on learning theory. In today's video, we will first see a quick introduction to RL, including MDPs and Bellman equations. Then I will present the algorithm UCB. Next, we will see the optimal regret of online RL with the problem of burn-in costs. And finally, we will see the paper's algorithm, which achieves the optimal regret with zero burn-in costs. Now, before we start, that would be so great if you could give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified of the next video. That's completely free for you, and it really helps the channel. Thank you. Also, if you are interested in RL, I released an interview with RL researcher Amy Zhang, this one up there. Among others, she explains how she got into RL, gives us research tips, and mentions some of the major challenges of the field. Make sure to check it out at the end of this video. The link will be in the description box down below. Finally, if you already are a seasoned RL expert, and you already know about MDPs, Bellman equations, and the algorithm UCB, you can skip and go to that time code there on the screen. Let's jump in. A short introduction to RL. RL is everywhere. If you Google AI applications, chances are there is some RL somewhere. Interested in a game algorithm which can beat the world champion at chess or go? That's RL. Autonomous driving? There is also RL. Wondering how OpenAI pre-trained ChatGPT? No, don't say it. There's RL too. Now what is this mysterious RL? RL studies the behavior of an agent who lives in an environment. This agent makes decisions and gets a reward for each decision they make. You can imagine that the agent is a video game character who performs a series of actions and gets rewarded. Formally, we have a finite set of states, from 1 to capital S, on which our agent can be, and a set of actions, from 1 to capital A, that our agent can do. At each time H, from 1 to a horizon capital H, the agent is in a certain state SH, here equal to 2 on the screen. Then they choose one action, AH, here it is action 3. And finally, they receive a random reward, RH, equal to 0.5 in our example. Then the agent will be teleported to the next state, SH plus 1, following the probability distribution P given H, SH, AH, which depends on the current time, state, and action. In other words, the agent will be at state 1 with probability P that SH plus 1 is equal to 1 given H, SH, AH, at state S with probability P that SH plus 1 is equal to S given H, SH, AH, and so on. Then the process restarts for the new state SH plus 1 in the example on the screen that is state S. Importantly, the reward and the next state depend on the current time H, the current state SH, and the current action AH. The model which captures all that, the states, the actions, the reward distribution, the probability transitions, and the potentially random initial state is called a Markov Decision Process, or MDP. In today's paper, the agent has a deterministic strategy that is a function pi and chooses action AH as pi of H SH. The value function is the expected cumulative reward of the agent starting at time H from state S. The Q function is the expected cumulative reward of the agent starting at time H from state S and with action A. So the Q function differs from the value function by the choice of a first action A. The optimal value and Q functions are the best possible values of V and Q achieved by the best possible strategy by star. Now let us see how those are connected. If the agent is at state S at time H, the best possible cumulative reward we can hope for is V star of H S. But for that, we first need to choose the best possible action A at time H and state S, and after that, we need to achieve the best possible Q function, and therefore Q star. Now let's look at Q star. The first term in the sum only depends on the given starting time, state, and action, HSA. 
And then those take our agent to a new state, SH plus one, following the probability transition. From that new state, SH plus one, the best cumulative reward we can hope for is V star of H plus one, SH plus one. And this gives a com complicated equation for Q star. And there you obtain two intertwined equations to describe Q star and V star. Those equations are called Bellman equations. We will use them to find an optimal strategy pi star. In our model, the transitions and rewards depend also on the time h. So if at time h the agent is at state s, we cannot evaluate the quality of action a, since we have no information on the reward at time state and action h s a. So we cannot choose a best action. That's why in RL we have episodes. We are going to run the above procedure capital K times called episodes. At each episode k equal to 1, 2, until capital K, we are going to perform a strategy pi k and observe a trajectory composed of a states, actions and rewards, shk, ahk, rhk, for all the times h from 1 to capital H. We hence collect capital K trajectories. The objective is now to maximize the value function over all the episodes with your sequence of strategies pi 1 to pi k. This is equivalent to minimizing the regret of your value function compared to the optimal value function. The algorithm UCB. At every time and state HS, the best action A maximizes the optimal Q function Q star of HSA. But Q star is unknown, so we need to estimate it. But to estimate it, our algorithm needs to carefully balance two factors. The exploration, choose all the actions regularly to collect information on the rewards and probability transitions for every time state in action, and the exploitation. At every time and state HS, choose the action which seems to maximize our objective Q star. To do that, at every time and state HS, the algorithm UCB or upper confidence bound chooses the action A which has the largest estimate of Q star plus an optimistic bonus B of HSA in order to promote variety in the choice of the actions, that is, the exploration. Usually the bonus is chosen such that the UCB estimate is larger than Q star with large probability. In other words, it is an upper bound on Q stars with large confidence, hence the name upper confidence bound. The algorithm UCB was originally designed as a solution to the multi arm bandit problem, which has very rich theory and applications. If you want to know more about bandits, I have made a video on that topic right there where I present a wonderful paper on best of both worlds algorithms. The link will be in the description box down below. The optimal regret of online RL and the problem of burning costs. All right, we have an MDP with S states, A actions, horizon H and K episodes. We want to find a policy to minimize the regret. What is the best regret we can hope for? Well, it is known that up to log factors, the optimal regret is this when the number of episodes k is larger than hsa. And if you are wondering, many algorithms achieve the optimal regret. Now, what is that condition k larger than hsa? hsa is called the burning cost. Concretely, during the first hsa episodes, your rewards may be terrible, but it's okay, your main objective is to collect information on the rewards and the probability transitions. Remember that they both depend on the time, state and action, HSA, so we need to reach each time, state and action tuple HSA several times. That takes many episodes, precisely HSA. However, while there are algorithms which achieve the optimal regret, they all have burning costs much larger than HSA. Now, what does that change and why is that a problem? Say you want to run your algorithm and achieve the optimal regret. If your algorithm has a burning cost of h to the 5 sa, it means that you need to train it during at least h to the 5 sa episodes in order to achieve the optimal regret. Put it that way, the regret of your algorithm is the score it achieves and the burning cost is the time it takes to train it. So existing algorithms achieve the optimal score but take a long training time. The main result of today's paper is that they derived an algorithm called monotonic value propagation or MVP, which achieves the optimal regret while having the optimal burning cost HSA. Precisely, they show that with probability at least one minus delta, the regret of MVP is lower than this. An optimal algorithm with no burning cost. 
Now, what is that algorithm MVP? It is based on, guess what, UCB. That's why I spoke about it earlier. At each episode, we run the policy which maximizes some estimate of the optimal Q function, Q star hat. The whole point is to compute that estimate, Q star hat. At each episode, we collect observations on the number of visits and rewards of each time state and action tuple, HSA. With that, we have empirical estimates of the rewards and probability transitions. Now we can use Bellman equations, those ones, to estimate the optimal value in Q function. In those equations, we don't know the rewards and probability transitions, but we can replace them by their empirical estimates plus an optimistic bonus for exploration. That's UCB. Now, how does that work concretely? Start from V star of H plus one, which is equal to zero. It's an empty stub. Then you can use the second Bellman equation to compute Q star of H. Then you have Q star of H. So you can use the first Bellman equation to estimate V star of H. Then you have V star of H, so you can use the second Bellman equation to estimate Q star of H minus 1. Then you have Q star of H minus 1. So you can use the first Bellman equation to estimate V star of H minus 1. And so on until Q star of 1. Now the algorithm introduced is a wee bit more subtle. What we do here is, we do not update the value in Q functions at every episode, but only when the number of visits N of HSA of one time state and action tuple HSA is a power of two. And when we perform the update, the reward and transition estimates are only based on the samples which have not been used in previous estimates. In other words, if the number of visits of HSA is at least two to the n, but smaller than two to the n plus one, then it will use the samples number two to the n minus one plus one to two to the n. Basically, the reason why we do that is that in our story, everything is correlated by the number of visits of each time, state and action, HSA. If the rewards of some HSA are large, then your algorithm will try to visit it more. So its number of visits will increase, and therefore it is correlated to the rewards, making the analysis a lot more complicated. However, given a fixed number of visits of HSA, then the rewards and probability of visits are independent. Therefore, we can bound the regret term for each value of n of HSA, and then sum all the bounds. But remember that capital K is the large one here, and the red sum on K terms on the right is too large. So we only update the estimates at every power of two, and therefore, we no longer need to bound the regret term for each value of n of HSA, but only for the powers of two, and the sum only has now log K terms. Now, I know that an oral explanation like that may be hard to follow, but if you want to know more about it, I have made a short post about it in my blog, mlnewpapers.com. Why not go there and have a look? I have also put a link to the amazing paper that we explored today in the description box down below. They also give many interesting results, including the relation between the regret and the probability distribution of the initial state. So make sure to check it out if you're interested. But alright! If you enjoy short videos on fantastic research papers like this one, there will be more coming up on this channel. I also post vlogs, researchers' interviews, and share with you my tips if you're interested in a career in machine learning. So stay tuned! If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. I would really appreciate that. Thanks again so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful week, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!